racism. Well, it appears to be on the increase in South Africa if one looks at the amount of incidents cropping up all over the country. Last year, over 500 racism-related cases were reported to the South African Human Rights Commission. According to the recently published South African Reconciliation Barometer by the Institute for Justice and Reconciliation, 47% of white South Africans believe that apartheid was not a crime against humanity. In a shocking video recently posted to YouTube, we are once again confronted with the ugliness of racism in this country. In Mpumalanga, an apparent racist attack on a black petrol attendant was caught on a surveillance camera. According to reports, the altercation between the petrol attendant and a group of bikers started after he asked them to move away from the pump because they were smoking. Now, today, we are joined by Dr. Fani Dutue, the Executive Director of the Institute for Justice and Reconciliation in our Cape Town studio. The IJR released the 2014 South African Reconciliation Barometer last week. Very good morning to you, Dr. Dutue. Thank you for joining us. Good morning. Dr. Dutue, just uh, the barometer last week, just give us the sort of overview in your own words on how, uh, how it was conducted and what came out? Well, it's a sample of the population of South Africa that we interview every year, Eben, to determine not so much about racism, but about reconciliation. So are we tilting towards learning to live together or not? And, the, and this was the 10th year we've done this. And this year, we actually did not do a survey. We just looked back over the last 10 years and tried to see some trends over the 10 years developing. And there's a clear trend, which is that uh, a bit of good news, uh, if you think of racism, which is that there's a growing middle ground of South Africans, black and white, that trust each other more and more as every year passes. But on either fringe of this middle ground, we do find uh, a worrying number of South Africans that are not buying into this. And I think that's where our problem lies. Looking at all the data that that collected, should we be worried about this, uh, especially in light of seeing some incidents in the era of social media being plastered all over the media almost, almost weekly, it seems? Yeah, well, I think we should always be very worried about racism when it rears its ugly head. It is, given our past, our apartheid past, it is a body blow to any attempt at reconciliation. I mean, just a small correction on your initial uh, uh, introduction. It's not 47% of white South Africans, but 39% of white South Africans that deny uh, that apartheid was a crime against humanity, which is still a worryingly high statistic. The problem with that sort of denialism is that it blinds you to the legacies of apartheid that continues today in society. And a system like that would always have a lingering effect. That is not to say that we're doing everything right today or that, you know, that there aren't problems to, today of our own making. But apartheid remains present, at least psychologically, but also structurally in society. And that does tend to produce, uh, if denied, produces racism. That number you said, that 47, 39% officially, as you said, has that number increased exponentially in recent time? And if so, why do you think that is the case? Well, it has increased. Uh, it, it, you know, 10 years ago, it was less than 25%. Um, so there are more white people today that think apartheid was not a crime against humanity than 10 years ago. That's worrying. And the worrying aspect of it is that as time passes, it's easy to begin to forget. You know, the icons that can tell the stories firsthand pass on. We, um, we forget the lessons of the TRC that had exposed the nasty underbelly of apartheid. And then one starts thinking, well, you know, it wasn't so bad. So, you know, what's the problem today? It, should, it has to be the, uh, uh, you know, the fault of the people living today. So, you know, it is important for us to remember where we come from to uh, prevent this sort of revisionism and to make sure that we remain focused on the core values of our constitution moving forward, which is unity and justice. Going forward, yes. How do we deal with that in the now, though? We, we, we deal, do we crack down on, on, on these incidents or do we have another sort of reconciliation 
commission where we, we talk to each other about this scenario? Well, I think there are two ways to deal with it, at least. And, I, you know, this is just off the cuff. But I would say, uh, on the one hand, we have to crack down. I mean, you know, when racism uh, or violence, for that matter, in any form, uh, uh, appears in our society, we've got to make it very clear that we're a rule of law society and this is not acceptable. So we've got to be hard on that. At the same time, if we don't provide incentive for people to then leave those ways and join the middle ground, uh, you know, then we're also in a, in, a, in a bind. So we've got to make sure that there's an alternative to racism that this group of people in the middle of South Africa that are in fact learning to trust one another because we've also seen that interracial trust is actually improving. So that middle ground needs strengthening. That means more jobs, we need to expand educational opportunities, draw as many people into this middle ground as we possibly can. Well, Dr. Fani de Toy, thank you very much for joining us. Very interesting statistics that you come forward with. That's the Executive Director of the Institute for Justice and Reconciliation here in South Africa. We're talking about race. We will be continuing this discussion of, around race, but let's have a look at some of your tweets on this matter before we carry on at SABC Newsroom, of course. Nole says, world number one, you are not a white, black, or yellow. You are a human. Start acting like that. Unfortunately, that's a problem that we have. Conrad Chersey says, if racism is not acceptable, so should racial privilege. Racial privilege gives rise to racism. Both need dealing with. That's a very sober view of, from Conrad Chersey. Ability, Abe Ngobo says, I used to be preoccupied by lots of useless things in, in the entertainment until reality catch up with me about racism and corruption in South Africa, says Ability. Dean McPherson says, Strength, you and your mother, my friend. Racism has no place in South Africa, and I support your efforts for justice. That one from Dean McPherson. Dyke says, Hmm, off the top of my head, far murders in SA, further world wars were fought because of racism. Yes. Fear, let's make our decisions not out of fear, but out of love, I say. Then all of this will go away. But let's just have a quick look at uh, what's happening on our Facebook page before we continue talking about race. Today you'll see there that South Africa is celebrating Chad Leclerc's success. This after the swimmer made history on the final night of the FINA World Short Course Championship when he became the first swimmer to win the 50 meters, 100 meters, as well as 200 meters butterfly. Then you'll see on our page that Mpumalanga police have arrested two men suspected to be members of a human trafficking syndicate operating between Mozambique and South Africa. And today we ask you, the viewer, do you think racist incidents are really on the rise in South Africa? What is your view? That's what we want you to tell us on our Newsroom Facebook page. All of those stories and a whole lot more, of course, on our Newsroom, Newsroom Facebook page. You can also go to sabc.co.za forward slash news for all the latest updates. Now, to further this discussion, we are joined by Ryland Fisher. Mr. Fisher has more than 30 years of experience in the media. Among his media assignments were as editor of the Cape Times, the New Age, and an assistant editor at the Sunday Times. Mr. Fisher also is the author of a book called Race. It was published in 2007, and it dealt with some of the issues related to race and racism here in post-apartheid South Africa. Very good morning to you, Mr. Fisher. Thank you for joining us today. It's a pleasure as always, even. Just tell us quickly your views on where we are with regards to race in South Africa. Are we going backwards or are we dealing with it but we don't get the props? I don't think we're going backwards even. I think what is happening is that we haven't really dealt with the issues in the way that we should have dealt with it. I think what happened um, was that we went from a situation of, of um, apartheid, of oppression, of exploitation to a situation of reconciliation without um, following the steps in between. And because we never really followed the steps in between repression and reconciliation, uh, we are now um, 
reaping basically uh, what we sowed then. Um, so I think uh, part of what we need to do is we need to, for once and for all, deal with these issues. We need to talk about it um, and we need to look at what's the best way to ensure that, uh, that we don't have this repetition of, of, of racist incidents. Um, everybody is so surprised when, when we have racist incidents in our country, but I'm not because I believe that the racist incidents have never really gone away. Um, what happens is that quite often um, they are not in the public eye because they're not reported. But whenever they get reported, then we kind of all seem to be so surprised that it is happening. I want to talk to you specifically about the role of the media and in polarization of South Africa. Are our media houses at times guilty in South Africa of stirring an unnecessary discourse around race in a negative way? I don't think so. In fact, I think that the media houses do not report enough on issues of race in this country. And for me, the thing is not just about um, reporting on, on the negative issues, but also looking at, at ways in which uh, we can do something positively about it. Um, I think, like I said earlier, what has happened is that a lot of these incidents happen in a society, but they never ever get reported. And so I think it's important for them to be reported. Um, and if they make people feel uncomfortable, that's fine. The thing about transformation in our society, transformation is by its very nature, by its very nature, it is uncomfortable. Transformation must make every one of us feel uncomfortable because that's the only way that we are going to force ourselves to deal with the issues of transformation. And racism is, and dealing with the issue of race and racism is an important part of dealing with the issue of transformation. How do you, you're back in Cape Town now, and I wanted to ask you, how do you view, we've had, I think, almost 10 or 11 incidents in Cape Town uh, in the last couple of months that have got a lot of coverage. How do you view it, and, and how do you view Cape Town's place within South Africa? I think Cape Town, um, these incidents, like I said, they, they, it's unfortunate, but I also think that, that these incidents are, are not new. I think it's been there. I think what, what worries me a lot is that it involves young people, young people who have no history or recollection of apartheid, of, of the legislated apartheid that so many of us lived under. And that worries me. But what I have discovered um, in Cape Town and in the rest of South Africa is that the, the battle against racism is an ongoing battle because as soon as you have dealt with educating and conscientizing one generation of people, you are already faced with another generation of people who will need to be conscientized. Now, if you ask yourself, where do these young people learn um, to become racist? They learn it from the peers, they learn it from the parents, from the communities. And that is the unfortunate thing. And so as long as um, the seeds can terminate within these communities, racism will never go away. It's an ongoing battle. Um, I don't think Cape Town is, is unique in that sense. Um, the unfortunate thing is just that a lot of these incidents that have been highlighted now have um, originated in Cape Town. Finally, you've got a minute to tell us what would you like to see happen in the short term for us to come to terms with and deal with this? I think we need to expose racism wherever it exists. Um, but then we also need to talk about it, talk about it, talk about it. And we need to find ways, you know, somebody needs to lead. And I mean, I've kind of accepted that in this case, government is not going to lead. And so we probably need to find ways in which civil society can lead the discussion and lead the action around racism. Um, there are little initiatives that have sprung up over the past a uh, while, but we need more. You know, we need a very, almost like a national discussion around the issue of race um, and how is, and what is the best way to deal with it. I think that's, that's the way forward for me and that is something that can happen very, very soon. Mr. Ryland Fisher, thank you very much for joining us. Ryland Fisher, 
well-known uh, newspaper editor and, of course, the author of a book called Race. We're talking about race and racism in South Africa on our Newsroom Facebook page. We've got a poll. What do you think? Is it something for us to worry about? Go there and tell us. Give us your views. We'd love to hear them, and we'll put them back uh, tomorrow. Time for us.